Do I need a license to sell homemade food in Arizona? And what is Arizona's cottage food law anyways? Well, on this video from Cottage Food Laws, we are going to cover everything you need to know to get your home-based business up and running in Arizona. And you might be quite surprised. It's one of the best states in the United States to start a home-based food business. We're going to get into that right now. All right, so welcome back to Cottage Foods Laws. This is YouTube's premier food entrepreneur channel, all dedicated to you, the homemade food entrepreneur, giving you tips, tricks, and understanding on how to get up and running from home and creating a side hustle or even a full-time business selling food from your home legally. So let's dive into Arizona's Cottage Food Law. My name is Damian Roberti. I am a food entrepreneur myself, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. We actually have four food e enterprise uh, food entrepreneur channels here on YouTube. Um, and we have those lists down below. We have a ton of great resources. Our one channel, Marketing Food Online, has over a thousand free videos. You should check that out as well. So let's dive into Arizona's cottage food law. So Arizona actually started this back in 2011. They actually initiated their law under um, cottage food laws in their state. They actually amended it. I believe it was around 2018. Um, it actually gave uh, the food entrepreneur even more types of foods to actually choose from. Um, it has one of the most successful types of cottage food operation laws in place. Um, it's very, I don't want to say lenient, but there's just not so many hoops to jump through. Some states make it extremely challenging and difficult just to get up and running. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I had read somewhere Arizona has over 10,000, 11,000 or so cottage food uh, operation businesses in the state alone. It's pretty amazing. So. Now I'm going to dive into what you can make, how much you can make, and a few other legalities. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it's not necessary for you to have a business license uh, for this Arizona Cottage Food Law, but I would recommend you definitely create an LLC to protect yourself from a legal perspective. Um, a lot of people misunderstand uh, cottage food laws and even doing something from home. Your homeowner's insurance policy does not cover you in case you get sued if someone gets sick or even dies or has allergic reaction from your food. So you need to protect yourself from a personal perspective and create an LLC for your business. Um, also, I would recommend you definitely get a business license um, and to operate that way. Most cottage foods do not require these. Of course, they're not required, but you need some layer of protection because you personally will be liable if someone does get sick. Now, some of the cool thing that allows producers to actually sell anywhere within the state, um, even indirect sales, such as grocery stores, coffee shops, and such um, other eateries and restaurants and things, which is fantastic. That is a great benefit to Arizona's cottage food laws because many states do not allow you to actually sell indirectly. It has to be directly to the customer from you to them. So keep that in mind as well. Um, there's also, there's no limit on the sales limit. So you could sell literally a million dollars of your baked goods if you wanted to from your home. Um, and that is something that's pretty amazing too. All right, so let's dive into specifically what, as far as selling, where can you sell specifically, Damien? So in Arizona, their cottage food laws allow you to sell um, at local events. You can sell online, by the way. You can create a website and sell online, but it has to be shipped within the state. They don't allow interstate sales, which is something that most cottage food laws do not allow. Roadside stands are perfectly fine. Uh, farmers markets are great. You can sell to restaurants. So if you're starting a spice business, and for instance, and you wanted to supply restaurants locally with it and they love it, uh, you can produce those spice blends and sell in restaurants, and in turn, they sell it to their customers by way of making it for them to eat. You can sell, obviously, directly from your home. If you're comfortable with it, if you're okay, people can come to your home and pick up their orders, and you can simply just do it that way without you spending the gas, time, and effort driving around and delivering things as well. Now, you can also sell to retail stores. That's something that's really unique. Uh, and resell it. Now, obviously, you're going to need to have certain types of labeling, and we're going to get into that in a minute. Stay with me all the way through the video to the end. I have three additional resources for you that will pop up on the screen as well. Uh, but we're going to cover that too as far as what's on the label. Now, different types of services. So what methods, Damien, can someone either pick it up or be delivered? Now, delivery is allowed. You have to deliver it yourself. So you'd have to put it in your car if you wanted to drive it over across town or through another neighborhood. You can deliver it yourself. I don't think I've ever read anywhere where you can't use anything like Uber Eats or anything of that sort because that's really more for food uh, restaurants um, and food service places like cafes and such to use. Uh, but delivery is allowed if you deliver it yourself. Mail order is allowed. Like we mentioned before, you can do this online by having a website set up and running and sold, selling your items through that. Home pickup, as I mentioned before, yes, you can do that as well. Um, wholesale is also something that's allowed within uh, cottage food laws for Arizona as well, which is very unique because many, if not actually only I think a couple of states allow that. Most states do not allow wholesale at all. So 
Next up, let's dive into the type of food. So Damien, what kind of foods can I actually make under this law? So things like homemade tortillas, uh, pizzelles, you can do cupcakes, cake pops, decorative cakes. Now keep in mind though, certain frostings or icings that have dairy or raw ingredients that have to be kept at a certain temperature, that's something that's a, as a non-potentially hazardous item, that's not gonna be on that list. So you make sure that your cakes have the right frosting and icings. You can do brownies, you can do cookies, muffins, scones, wedding cakes, uh, bagels, even breads or biscuits. Um, as far as candy is concerned, anything related to chocolates, candies that you make at home, if this happens to be brittles, uh, cotton candies, uh, truffles, you can do lollipops, fudge, and so on. Um, now as far as condiments, you can actually make, if you do your own honey, you can make and produce your own honey, which is really unique as well. Many states don't allow that. Next up for dry goods, things of that sort, like teas, you can do herbs, spices, pastas, coffee, um, ce dry cereals, if you do granolas, for instance. Um, you can do uh, pastries, as long as the pastries don't have a filling or a topping that has to be refrigerated or is time sensitive, you cannot make those. But anything outside of that, you can do pastries, you can do pies. Uh, pies, of course, can't be meat pies or cheese pies. If it Again, any product that uh, can potentially hazardous is a product that has to be time or temperature sensitive, you understand? So if it's something that has cheese in it, it has to be refrigerated, that's a no. If it has meat in it, it has to be refrigerated, that's a no. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this, right? So anything that you have that's an ingredient that be potentially time or temperature sensitive, that's a no. Uh, next up, you can do fruit butters, jams and jellies, marmalades, those kinds of things. Now, if you're into making snacks, like chocolate covered pretzels, chocolate covered dried fruits, uh, granolas or popcorns, kettle corn, popcorn balls, caramel corn, nuts and seeds, you can do that as well. Okay, so let's dive into now what you can't make. So Arizona's cottage food laws has a huge list of what you cannot make because a lot of these items are again perishable or time or temp temperature sensitive, or they may be acidic, acidified, meaning like vinegars you can't do, uh, meat jerkies, oils, mustards, uh, nut butters, ketchup sauces, acidified foods, butter cream frosting. That back to what I mentioned before about the cakes, you cannot make a frosting for the cake that's got butter cream. Uh, low acid canned foods, carbonated drinks, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but meat jerkies like beef or turkey jerky, that's something that you can't do at home. You'd have to do that in a commercially licensed facility. So next up, now what are some of the things that are limiting as far as what you can and can't do for the business side of it? Now when you're preparing these foods in home, under Arizona specific cottage food laws, they do restrict um, additional children or any of that sort in the area in which you're gonna be producing it. Now what I mean by that is, if you're using your home kitchen to produce products, you don't want kids running around the kitchen, for instance. Um, hair could be going all over the place. They could be getting stuff in cookies or cakes, or you're making granola or sauces, people leaning over it, looking into it, breathing on them. You really want to keep an area dedicated for you to handle this as a business, and you should conduct it as a business. Um, of course, in Arizona, you can't rent a commercial kitchen and make a product there and bring it home and then sell it. So they do uh, prohibit the use of a commercial uh, equipment or even commercial kitchen setting for you to produce these products and then turn around and say that you made it at home, that you can't do. Now, of course, you can't ship over state lines, as I mentioned before earlier. You can ship within the state of Arizona. That is completely allowed. You can definitely do that. Um, and you need to use your actual residency, your primary residency, as it's known. Um, on the Arizona website, I did a little bit of research before I did the video, and I found out that you do need to do it from your home. So you can't hop over to your friend's house, make some products, and then say it's from you. Okay. Now, how much financially, Damien, how much money can I make every year? As I mentioned again in the introduction, that's unlimited. That is up to you. If you literally could sell half a million dollars worth of product, good luck. And that's great because there is no sales limit in Arizona's cottage food laws. So next up, now you, before you can actually, um, you have to actually register um, as a co cottage food uh, producer, you must take a credited food safety course. Now this is something that normally is about $10 or so. You can do this online, but you do have to do that as well. After you complete your food handlers course, you have to register online with the health department. Um, and it's actually good, I believe it's for three or four years, if I'm not mistaken. Every three to four years, you'll have to renew that. But you do have to at least register with the health department. Now, I have not found out any information, but nothing about inspections. You don't need to have a health department inspections. I didn't find any information about that at all. So as far as labeling, this is what I talked about in the beginning of the video. I wanted to go over this. This is really important. So what are the things that go on? The label? There's six specific things that go on the label in Arizona for cottage food laws. So number one, the business name. So if it's Damien's uh, Cookie Business, for instance, the name of the business itself, Damien's Cookie Business, needs to be on the label. The date it was produced, Arizona does require a date that's produced. So if it's made on October 1st, 2022 or something to that effect, 
make sure that it says October 21st, um, and that the October 1st, sorry, 2022, so that you have the date in which it was made so customers know how old the product is and how when it was made. Now, ingredients. You need to make sure all of the ingredients are on every single label. Very simple, mainly from the most used down to the least. Make sure that you have that in order. So if you're doing a cake, for instance, obviously the bulk of that's probably flour, then sugar, milk and eggs, etc., etc. So you want to do it from most to least. Now, once you do get registered, they're going to give you, now this is unique to Arizona because not every state does this, they're going to give you a permit number. So you do have a permit number which is required to be put on the label that you have to put on your food product. Okay. Next up is the product name. This is not the business name. So if you are Damien's Cookie Company, that's the business name. If you're making chocolate chip cookies, then you need to put chocolate chip cookies on there. Okay. Or if it's sugar cookies or if it's an ice cream cake or whatever you're making. Well, actually, you can't make ice cream cake. I'm sorry. Um, so lastly, too, you're going to have a disclaimer, a little statement. And the statement is pretty normal across the board. In most cottage food laws in each state, they do require... Some kind of disclaimer saying like this product was produced or made in a home kitchen uh, that may you know maybe processed with common food allergens and is not actually subject to like a health inspection of any kind. So make sure you've got your little disclaimer on there so people notice it's a home-based business. Okay. So if you're looking to create your business in Arizona, that's a quick rundown of some of the most important aspects of getting up and running with your cottage food business. If this is your first video, definitely hit the subscribe button. And here are some additional resources. Check out these videos here for additional resources for your cottage food business and check out our other YouTube channels as well. We'll have links down in the description. If you have questions, let us know, guys. We, we love it and we're actually just launched this channel. So any comments we get, we'd love to create uh, content for you. I'll see you on our next video.